Bitte. Find Robbie. Find Robbie. Find Robbie. Find Josh. Ask him where they are. Can shoot him. The light room. The light room. I know some of the, the questions was why didn't we shoot back and all of that. That particular vehicle didn't have any um, gun ports um, in the doors with um, windows, so that wasn't a great option. I had I would have had to open the door to engage him with a rifle. Um, at that stage, my vehicle was my weapon and my, my cover, so that was my first option um, to use until it's exhausted, until the vehicle has been shot out or disabled completely. Then my follow-up um, you know, actions would have changed. But at that stage, that, that was my first option and that's what we, that, that's what we used. So, um, I went after the audio again. At that stage there were six armed men on the, on the highway. I tried to chase the audio down. He went into um, you know, entrance of a hotel close by. I pushed him around. He went over, the, over those concrete balls. He got stuck. I tried to get, get over the concrete balls to get close to him. And I got stuck. And unfortunately that's where the whole thing ended. Um, so that's, that's how that incident happened. Uh, the the severity of the gunshots, or you know, the the accuracy of the gunshots, is evident that it was not a first-time um, robber or a untrained person behind those AKs and the other weapons that they've used. You can see they were um, well well prepared. The motors of Rundi is is what they normally use, we know that, um, and that was my 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 go-to my go-to plan. The only thing you can really do in a situation like that is try to pre-visualize what you're going to do. There's unfortunately no ways that any person, any training provider can can train you specifically in a real-life scenario like that to do. So in my mind, I knew. My weapon was my vehicle, and that is how I was going to um, utilize it. And I kept on pre-visualizing what I will do, and luckily um, that kicked in. Um, it was an instinctive action. In a situation like that, one cannot formulate plans once the shots is incoming and once the once everything starts happening. Then you are a lot of your actions is based on instinctive actions and those instinctive actions are based from previous experience and um, training 
and you know concepts what we call muscle memory that needs to be built and all of that starts in your mind um, you need to have a you need to have a strong mind you need to have a clear mind as to what your um, weapons are you need to be instinctively familiar with your tools and systems that you has to your um, availability Let's talk about some of the talking points out there. Um, the first one being, <clears throat> okay, you covered why didn't you shoot back? Because that's one of the issues that I see all over. Why didn't they shoot back? Okay, so that one we've covered. The next one, uh, what could Lloyd have done any different? <laughs> yeah. hold, hold the gun better. Yeah. <laughs> Look, yeah, um, whenever you see you know, all these incidents, you know, and with CCTV footages and cameras all over the world, we see them more and more, and um, dash cams of police vehicles, shopping centers, and things like that. And every second armchair critic and keyboard warrior has got his own version of what he would have, would have done. Um, we take it from where it comes, we just laugh and laugh at them. You know, <laughs> The, some of the comments are really funny actually um, but you know those people that has got lots of critics um, or criticism against Lloyd you know they must get up put their sugar free um, soft drink down put their bucket of popcorn down get up from behind their screen or the TV where they watch the 100th you know, action movie put on the bulletproof put on your boots Get into the car with us um, in that confined space, you know, and maybe when you're lucky, because you know you are bound to be lucky sometimes, um, you know, bullets will be incoming. Yeah. And let's see what you are made of, really, because hindsight is a wonderful thing. Yeah. And in hindsight, I could have done much better. I could have done certain things better. But in the moment, things happens in the moment, and you need to live in that moment, and you need to react in the moment. So, um, yeah, Lloyd did a, did a good job. He did what he was asked to do. Um, I asked him to phone Romy and Joss, uh, <laughs> by name they are very famous now. Um, unfortunately, there was um, scramblers and cell phone scramblers and blockers and all those type of things. And that's, those type of equipment is available to the, to the bad guys. So he couldn't make the call. Um, what else should he have done? You know, like you said, must, should he have held the gun better? Um, there was not an opportunity for him to get out, run, shoot, or do anything. The best thing he could do was stay calm, which he did brilliantly. He didn't freak out um, and be a bigger, bigger um, burden on me, yeah, yeah. trying to keep the car on its wheels. So, you know, for a guy that work fourth day in the company <laughs> and to, you know, on the fourth day or well, first week in the company, fourth day in the gun battle, he did exceptionally well, hats off to you. The level of training and the level of ability of, of armed security officers from all in every field, be this cash and transit, armed reaction. And I'm very sad to say that the that the quality and the ability out there does not stand up to the to the dangers they are facing. The problem is now that the outcome of a situation like that is based on luck. Um, the, the operator is just lucky that he hasn't been killed and that is just not good, a good place to be. The industry needs to realize that um, the better trained officer you get, the better jobs you will get. Mm -hmm. uh, they, then you, you, the, the guy on the street will sell himself or sell the company. He needs to look the part and he needs to be the part at the end of the day. Yep. Um, you know, you can, I've seen companies that really doesn't care. They've sent, they, they um, send the guy maybe once a year for a, uh, a qualifying shoot or a, what we call a regulation 21 assessment, which is not even closely enough to get the guy where he needs to be to be able to manage himself. Um, but when it comes to bottom line margins, um, 
they they do not want to spend money on their personnel. Yeah. You know that goes for apart from training. You know it goes to equipment and everything that goes with it. But when it comes to specific training, the people needs to to be able to have the confidence to go out there and know whatever comes his way, he will be able to to be able to manage. Yeah. Too many times I get onto the range and I ask them. If you look at an incident like that, are you how, how many how much confidence have you got to, to manage that? And sadly, almost 90% plus of them recognizes the fact that they do not have what it takes to, to do that. So to them, it's a job. He needs to earn an income um, and knowingly going into a potential gunfight every single day and still do it, still put on the bulletproof day after day. Um, you know, it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, but you know, desperateness and you know, financial tough times calls, calls for desperate measures at the end of the day.